Hey, what's up, everybody? Black Ninja 797 here, and welcome back to another video, guys. In today's video, we are doing another Left 4 Dead 2 ranking video. In this Left 4 Dead 2 ranking video, we are going to be ranking all the dynamic events that are in Left 4 Dead 2. Now, I don't want this to be confused with the scenario or the panic events because those are a separate thing which I've ranked before in the past. And if you guys want to see those rankings, there's a link for that video down below in the description. So let's talk about this. So what is considered a dynamic event in Left 4 Dead? Well, to make sure there's no confusion, like I said, between that and panic or scenario events, let me explain. The way that I am ranking them for the sake of this video, a scenario event or a panic event is any time that you summon a horde, but however though, when it comes to a dynamic event, a dynamic event does not require it, but sometimes it can happen. I will elaborate on this more as we go along, but I just want to let you guys know that just straight off the bat so you guys don't think that this is just essentially a duplicate video of my scenarios ranking video. But yeah guys, so in this video, like I said, we're going to be ranking all the dynamic events that are in Left 4 Dead. If you guys end up enjoying this video and you guys do want to support the channel to show that you guys love me and that I love you, and you guys want to see more Left 4 Dead videos in general, please show your support by dropping a like comment, subscribe, share the video with your friends, maybe your dog or your hobo behind your local 7-Eleven will end up enjoying. And anyways guys, let's end up ranking all the dynamic events that are in Left 4 Dead. Alrighty guys, so coming in at our very first spot, this is going to end up being the rainstorms that show up on Hard Rain and also the Passing. Now, I have read your guys' comments, I always read your guys' comments, and I heard that some of you guys like Hard Rain for this specific element. A lot of you guys like the challenge that Hard Rain provides, and you guys enjoy the immersion and the realism that in turn comes with the rain on these maps. Now, I'm not saying that I blame you, I definitely can respect that opinion, but however though, that's just simply not my opinion, so I hopefully you guys can respect that back at me. But yeah guys, I really could care less about the rain. I don't necessarily go to a game for realism. I know some people like live and breathe realism when it comes to their video games, their movies, everything. But it does not matter to me. I mean, it's a zombies game and the way I look at it is that I just want the zombies game to be fun so I can just go without the rain. Alrighty guys, coming in at the next spot here, this is going to be the most recognizable dynamic event and that's going to end up being the car alarms. Now the car alarms are on pretty much every single location in Left 4 Dead. I was going to say map, but I was going to be like, there's at least one per chapter, it feels, of every single campaign. Uh, like, Valve always found a way to throw this thing in there. It's the easiest to do, and it does immerse you within the gameplay while still being at a, I would say, more fair slash also less annoying approach of going about things. Take the rain, for example, on Hard Rain. I can respect how people enjoy the immersion and the challenge when it comes to that. But the way you guys feel about that, I feel more about the cars. Especially since it doesn't impair my eyesight and you know my hearing as much. It makes it just more fun and enjoyable. Plus, also, it just looks better on YouTube. I don't know about you guys, but like when I try to record gameplay, if I'm playing on Hard Rain, there's rain everywhere. It's just, it's just annoying. It looks ugly. But uh, yeah, like I think the car alarm is a classic. It's one of my favorites just because it's super basic. It's obviously just don't shoot the car and there's nothing that's going to happen to you. If you shoot the car though, you'll suffer the consequences. Pretty straightforward. I can appreciate that and that's why I like it. Just a little bit better than the other ones. Alrighty guys, coming in at our next spot here. This is going to end up being the fire on Dead Center. Specifically the very first chapter. Now with Dead Center's fire... This isn't exactly per se something that you trigger as a event. It's just something that just is naturally already there. It's a part of the story narrative. You already know the building's on fire. You must escape. So you don't exactly trigger it. I feel like, for example, the scenario events can also be applied with this logic where I feel like that a lot of you guys might be like, okay, how is this kind of an event if it's just kind of almost like a piece of the map and you're not exactly triggering anything. It's just kind of always there. The way I look at this is that anything that is... A part of the environment, regardless of whether or not the player triggers it or not, if it is a means to either end up killing the player, or if it's a means to end up handicapping the player in some way, or also the lastly is a means to be immersive or like cinematic, 
th that's kind of like the three things I'm looking for is basically immersion and if it like makes the gameplay any of like more immersive or challenging. And with the fire, it definitely throws in those elements. You have to be very careful going through the building and trying not to get yourself burned because otherwise it can very much kill you. And if you're playing on the higher difficulties, there is that sense of tension because you know one wrong move and you can light yourself, uh, you know, you can light a fire under your ass essentially. So you want to make sure you're careful. And I definitely like this because it feels good. It feels like a reasonable challenge and it doesn't feel too tedious at the end of the day. Alrighty guys, coming in at our next spot here, this is going to end up being the Crows on Blood Harvest and also the Sacrifice. I've noticed that some of these get reused, unlike the scenario events, where they're usually just for the most part on one map. Some get reused, but not always. But it seems like with the dynamic events, they are on multiple maps. And hell, it's even going to be in Back for Blood. If you guys remember all those freaking Crows that were everywhere in Back for Blood, they really wanted to test out those Crows. So yeah, uh, and Back for Blood, I'm hoping that those eventually get you know, a little bit like less severe because in Back for Blood they were really overpowered and luckily in Left 4 Dead they're not that extreme. With Left 4 Dead's crows, the Left 4 Dead crows still function the same. They do attract zombies to you because they, you know, they caw and they alert zombies. But they're very far and few in between. You'll very rarely run into these things. They're on like one part of the Sacrifice and one part of Blood Harvest being the second chapter of Sacrifice and the finale of Blood Harvest. You can see these in custom maps sometimes too, and very rarely do you also see people take advantage of like placing these everywhere also as well. A lot of people realize that they don't want to go overkill with these things. But yeah, when it comes to the crows, it definitely gives that uh, Edgar Allan Poe sense of imagery where it's a zombie apocalypse, there's death looming because the crows are usually associated with death other than vultures as a means to a story bit. But uh, yeah, that's basically where I put the crows. Alrighty guys, coming in at the next spot here, this is going to end up being the jukebox. Now I know exactly what you guys are thinking. You're thinking to yourselves and asking the question is, John, have you lost your goddamn mind and why the hell are you putting this in here in the video? You just know that this is filler and you're trying to get the video to be longer. Well, first of all, I just want to reply to the very first question being like, yes, I am goddamn crazy. I'm surprised you guys have just now caught on to this. Have you seen some of my most recent videos? Second of all, when it comes to this, the reason why I'm putting this in here is not necessarily to fill in the time, although definitely that helps, but the reason why I put it in here at the end of the day, guys, is because of the fact that it summons zombies. So let me explain. All these dynamic events, whether it be, like, let's say, the military bombings, or whether it end up being the crows or whatever. All these are meant, like I said, to immerse the player and sometimes end up challenging them with the gameplay. Now, when it comes to the jukebox, the jukebox is supposed to be just something that the player can mess around with, discover Easter eggs if they really want to, and just fight zombies. I'm primarily focusing on the fact that you can summon zombies with this thing. That's what I'm leading with because why else would this thing be here? It's not cosmetic. You can interact with it. It's meant to be there. It's got secrets. It's got a element to the game and it's meant to be there for specifically a reason. And I consider this a dynamic event in my eyes because it allows you to fight zombies. When it comes to the horde summoning steps with the scenario events, you're also fighting zombies. So why is this any different? I mean, I'm labeling it different, yes, because it's not deliberately a scenario event, like, technically or officially, but it functions almost s certainly the same. So that's why I decided to put it on here, but you can let me know in the comments otherwise. But yeah, that's just my opinion at the end of the day, guys. Alrighty, guys, this next spot is actually going to be within the same vein as the last one, and for this spot, this is going to end up being the wedding song on The Passing. So, when it comes to The Passing, on the very first chapter, we know that there is the witch in the bridesmaid's outfit, and the witch got left, you know, when she was a human by, I'm assuming, her, you know, husband at the time, and she ended up becoming a witch during the apocalypse. Now, if you go up to the one radio that's at the wedding itself, and you end up playing it, you're going to piss off the witch and she will automatically attack you. You don't have to do anything to provoke her other than just play the music of a bad memory and therefore she will attack. It's kind of funny, I guess that means that the story, unless this is literally just for the sake of gameplay purposes, but that means that the story means that the witch or any of the infected can recall their old memories, which is kind of interesting. But yeah guys, that's where I'm ranking this. Alrighty guys, the next spot that I've got here is going to be the military bombing explosions from the Parish and also Coldstream. Now, I decided to, you know, chunk a lot of these together in this video because they're essentially the exact same thing. They're just reused assets. They're not really that different map to map. 
So yeah, I'm ranking the Parish and Cold Streams together. Anytime the military explosions happen, it definitely will give you that sense of realism. It will give you that sense of immersion. They're never going to end up being really a threat to you, other than, like, for example, with Cold Stream, where, like, the debris can end up happening to land on you, or if you ended up having a zombie, you know, getting alerted by you. But that's really the only thing. This will very rarely get you killed. This will very rarely get you in trouble. But it's just cool that's there. I'm just glad that it exists. Now, see, this is actually a perfect example about why I had this become a separate list from the Scenario or Panic Events video. Take the gas station on No Mercy. You can shoot the gas cans, or you know, just anywhere on the gas station at No Mercy, and the whole entire thing is going to explode. It's going to, like, burst into embers and flames, and the whole thing will literally blow up. Now, funnily enough, this doesn't summon the horde that is within this chapter. It's actually the giant little uh, window cleaner scaffolding thing that's right next to it and for some reason even though that has little to no noise in comparison to the giant explosion that you just made this is somehow the thing that summons the zombies it's so stupid i always point this out to my friends and be like dude how the hell is a gas station explosion not give you away but as soon as I decide to, you know, use the windshield wiper thing, or the window cleaner thing, I'm automatically alerted to every single zombie within the whole entire goddamn world. It just makes no sense. Alrighty guys, we're down to our last two. So coming in at number two, this is going to end up being the tank that is summoned on the second chapter of Coldstream. The one where he ends up jumping off of the hill and onto the highway and throwing a rock at you guys. Now this could just be any ordinary tank fight kind of similar to the one with the train car tank on the Sacrifice, but I'm classifying him in this on his own list, uh, for the Coldstream one at least, is because he throws the rock, and it's so intentionally meant to end up being a dynamic event. You can tell from the setup alone. The way that this is meant is to make the player realize that, oh shit, this just got real moments. And that's exactly what it feels like every single time. And I remember the moment that I played this for the very first time, that's exactly what happened to me. And that's why I love it so much. But guys, there's still one more event left that is near and dear to my heart. It's my absolute favorite dynamic event of all time because I love this, the, you know, the cinematic of this. And you can already see that it's loading up. But I'm just going to let the actions and just let it speak for itself by just me just showing you the clip outright and explaining it afterward. That is one of my all-time favorite cinematics, and I think it's one of the best ever in video game history, period. The dead air plane flying around already gives you this sense of immersion and everything, but seeing it go from the very beginning to the very, very end where you see the journey of the thing flying around, and eventually you end up seeing it, and you're at the airport, and you got this beacon of hope, this like, oh crap, we're actually going to make it out of here, and then you just look... And you see it coming in, and it's not slowing down, and it's arching, and it's leaning, and it's skidding on the ground. It goes, it goes face up, and then boom, explosion, and there's nothing left. No, no survivors at all. No one survived. It's just wow. That is like a wow. This shit just got real moment again. But it's not like it is with Coldstream. You don't have to attack the player to prove this point. You just simply just show them a beacon of hope, and then you take it away in a very, very Michael Bay style fashion. And it, that definitely shows throughout this. It was a, it's like my ultimate guy dream to see this explosion happen in real life. Obviously, with no one getting hurt. Obviously, but like that was like a cool guys don't look at explosions moment. But I just can't help but to look at it. It's not like you can look away from something like that. That's such a big deal. Like, what that means to the survivors is just like, shit, what do we do now? You know, it's like, it's like wow, like, that that was like, that was completely something that you just do not expect. When you play that game, when you play Left 4 Dead 1, when you play Dead Air for the very first time, and then that happens to you, it's just like, god damn. 
God damn was I not expecting that. Because here's the thing is that we've known about all those other dynamic events like that happen off camera. Like the No Mercy helicopter guy turns into a zombie, he crashes. Same thing with the, the Dark Carnival one, he ends up turning and then they crash. But this time you actually get to see it. And that when you actually get to see it, it just hits different, man. It just absolutely hits different compared to just knowing about it in the background. And that's why it's the all-time number one. But anyways, guys, that's going to be it here for today's video. I truly hope you guys ended up enjoying. If you did, please consider dropping a like, comment, and subscribe, and all that beautiful stuff. Before we do wrap things up, guys, just want to mention a couple things before we do take off. The very first of those being is that I do have several social medias outside of YouTube that I would recommend that you guys uh, take a look at or at least you know take a peek at because I have a whole bunch of stuff that I do outside of YouTube such as a Twitch channel for live streams. I just tweet about my personal thoughts and memes on like my Twitter and Instagram and I also do have a Discord full of fellow meme lords like you and I would like to get to know you personally more off videos and off streams so feel free to peek around there. I don't think you will regret it at all. In fact, I think you are going to be actually very pleased at what you find. And also, lastly, is that I do have a supporter creator code now with Epic Games, guys. They are now my very first sponsor. And I wanted to just encourage you guys to please use code BLACKNINJA797 in all caps in the Fortnite and Epic Games item shops. That'd be very much appreciated. I have the ability to end up being able to help my channel and support the stuff that I do and my content when you guys be able to help me out like that. So anytime any of you guys use those codes, end up just sending me a screenshot and I will definitely most certainly give you a shout out as a means to say thank you. But yes, guys, I hope you truly ended up enjoying today's video. Let me know what you want me to rank next for Left 4 Dead, and I will see you guys all in the next one. Thank you for watching, guys, and I hope you enjoyed another YouTube video for the most unique YouTuber you guys are ever going to see. Thank you for watching, guys, and peace out.